Feminism today is not the pro-equality movement it once was, it's very well known. There was once a time, in the previous century, where the feminist movement was based and founded on campaigning for legitimate things though, believe it or not, such as women's equal pay, the right for women to vote, this was also known as the suffragette movement. Hey, hey, any bird who wants to chain us after my railings and suffer a jet movement gets my vote. <laughs> However, if we skip to the current year, the movement has radically changed from what it once was. Today, the ideology of modern feminism has become more about bashing and attacking men, calling anyone who doesn't align with them the typical buzzwords such as sexist, bigot, and their favourite, misogynist. But not only does getting involved in radical feminism radically alter how people who have adopted this poisonous ideology think, but it also seems to make young women radically alter their appearance in various and hilarious ways as well, that make us rational beings who actually see them in person want to wash our eyes out with bleach. So I thought we could have a look at some of these, you could say honestly depressing, before and after photos of young women who have chosen to do this to themselves. So let's get into this then, shall we? Wish me luck, lads. All right, men, let's do it! So if we get this first one up here, if you ask me, today she looks like Private Pyle if he chosen to grow a mohawk. I'm not necessarily sure whether this is a tattoo or whether it's face paint. If it is a tattoo, God help her. But as we can see, she's had to shave her head to have this put on as well. Here we have another one that's decided to cut her hair and also dye it a bright blue kind of colour, a turquoise colour. If you ask me, she kind of looks like the discount punk version of Miley Cyrus, which, if you ask me, is not a good thing. We have one here who has chosen to put what looks like a pin through her nose and also looks like she started to grow armpit hair as well and by the looks of it she's trying to lick it. Another lady here who seems to have got very, very thick thighs since adopting feminism and also another one that has chosen to cut her hair short. Here we've got another one that has chosen to cut her hair extremely short and has also done it a bright blue colour. Oh, and she likes the Star Wars sequels, why am I not surprised? Here we've got another one right here who has chosen to shave off one side of her hair and also seems to have started gaining an interest in wearing dog collars as clothing. Another one here that has chosen to cut her hair really short and also seems to embrace armpit hair. Interestingly, for a movement that is all about hating men these days, why do feminists seem to want to look more and more like boys? It, it really does baffle me. Do you ever look at some of these pictures and wonder what the parents of these individuals are thinking when they see them? Another young lady, another very nice young lady who has decided after reading up and taking up feminism has now decided she wants to look like an extra out of the 1979 film The Warriors. Another lovely feminist right here who seems to think it was a good idea to try and fit into clothes that she probably would have struggled to get into at 10 years old, let alone around 20 years old. Because the pants haven't been built yet that'll take the job on! It's getting tiring, repeating myself, but we've got another one here that's chose to put weight on and shave her head. This is literally just like a before and after picture of someone who's gained a blue check mark on Twitter next to their name. It seems this feminist has got more and more whiter as she got more and more into feminism. Has this one checked her white privilege? Here we have a young woman who's decided she wants to look like Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter. Here we have a feminist today that does seem to want to look like a zombie in her pictures. I guess it makes sense because feminism does turn you into a zombie. This one seems to have cut off one side of her hair and done a very bad job at it, but also seems to have cut off one side of her eyebrow as well. I wonder how those tattoos will look on her 30 years from now. This one looks like she's taken up the idea of wanting to audition for the role of Ursula in the upcoming live-action remake of The Little Mermaid. This one seems to have thought it was a good idea to try and look like an extra out of Star Trek. This one seems to have thought it was a good idea to decide she wants to look like a Native American tribesman. This one seems to have thought it was a good idea to have her hair done like a clown. Well, feminism and clowns, aren't they kind of the same thing? Here we have someone who seems to have finished reading the Communist Manifesto. Interestingly, if she was actually in one of these legitimate communist countries, she'd have been halfway to a gulag by now. 
This one seems to have the facial expression of someone who's just been told that there's only two genders. Honestly, I'm not sure what is worse for your health, deciding to adopt smoking or deciding to adopt the ideology of feminism. I don't really know. Now, even though it is pretty depressing what these women have done to themselves, they do have the right to do this if they so want. They want to get ridiculous looking tattoos, they can. They want to get a daft looking haircut, they can. They want to act like the biggest and possible degenerates they can, guess what, they have the freedom to do that. But ultimately I'm under the impression that this will just be a phase for most of these young ladies. In 10 years from now I can't really see most of these women remaining like this. Most of this is down to the utter degeneracy that is encouraged by what is put on the television, the kind of music that is put on the radio, and things like that. I don't really think it's entirely their fault. However, the problem for many of these women that I can foresee is 10 years from now, when these ladies are in their mid-30s, it may be possibly too late for them. Now what I mean is, it's recommended that women should find a partner and start a family with that partner, around their mid-twenties. Instead, they choose to remain single and spend their prime days and prime years just resenting and disliking those men instead. And again, technically they have the freedom to do that. However though, when they reach those ages, their mid-thirties, and known men want to go out with them, and they're without any offspring, they're going to become very bitter. They're going to become very angry and possibly depressed. And I don't want that for anyone. The average lifespan of women in the West, in Western countries, is between 80 and 85 years old. Do you really want to spend all those years alone? Believe me, you don't. But I am hopeful that most of these women will get out of that phase before it becomes too late. But the decision is ultimately down to the feminists themselves. Which road are you going to go down?